Thousands of people have mysteriously vanished in America's wilderness. Join us as we dive into the deep end of the unexplainable and try to piece together what happened. You are listening to Locations Unknown. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Locations Unknown. I'm your co-host, Joe Irado, and with me, as always, is a guy who always lives his life carbon neutral, Mike (laughs) Vandebogart. Thanks, Joe, and once again, thank you to all of you who have tuned into the Locations Unknown podcast. Just got a couple of updates for you today. First, we would like to thank our new Patreon supporters. We've got Kate Marr, Jordan Calderon, Nick and Steph Dementiev, Stacey Sanchez, Ashley and Bowie uh, Bibbo, Anthony uh, Calzada, and Nick Embry. So uh, thank you for helping to support the show. Joe and I say this every episode, but uh, it really means a lot to us that you guys uh, help us out even for $1. And anybody that's listening that wants to help us out, they can head over to our Patreon page. The link will be listed below. And for as little as $1 uh, a month, you can get access to, a you know, I think we got... 11 or 12 uh, Patreon-only episodes. Um, We're recording a new episode soon. Uh, We've got a bunch of voicemails that we've gotten, and we'll be uh, listening to those and kind of just reacting to them. And uh, there's a lot of... You get free sticker, and there's a lot of other stuff we do giveaways, so... uh, And you you can know that you're uh, you're helping a a show out that you really like, so... Can I just say, like, I feel like a proud parent right now, how you just powered through those Patreon supporter names. I know. With very little issue, like, you just, like, you did it. So, I may I, have, I'm just so, I'm so proud. Yeah, I may have, I may have gotten them all wrong, but I, uh, I am just going to. But you were confident. You were so yes. confident. I was like, he got it. Those are all the right ways. And even yeah. if they say it's not, that is now how their name should be. Yeah, we do. Uh, one of our biggest gripes from listeners is uh, Joe and I get names of pretty much everything wrong. So <laughs> we, uh, some of our phone calls reference that they're hilarious. Yeah, we will. Try. I do feel bad, but they're funny. Yeah, we, uh, we, we will make a better effort on the uh, the pronunciation of names going forward. So uh, and if you would like to call the show and leave a voicemail about how terrible we are or how much you like us or about anything, Uh, feel free to call uh, 208-391-6913 and leave us a voicemail. Uh, I'm probably not going to make extra effort to pronounce (laughs) things right because the voicemails are kind of funny to me, and I'm not doing it to be mean or trolling, but like, I figured putting our number out on the internet would have garnered a lot more attention than it has. It's slowly I think, building. I think it's only when you don't want the attention is when right. the internet like turns on and comes after you. Yeah, so uh, just be aware that uh, whatever you leave, we may or may not use in a future episode. So don't say anything that you wouldn't want the entire world to hear (laughs) here's the Um, deal if it's something that's like a little on the edge we might not use your name we will try and protect your identity if it's something that could get you in trouble but if it's there and it's funny and it's weird we're gonna probably air it yeah we'll probably bleep out last names uh just so to keep the privacy of people calling but uh so yeah and a couple of final points here first uh joe and i usually take a summer break usually from july to september but uh, this summer, Joe and I, you know, we're on the cusp of starting kind of a, we're going to start recording video during each podcast. So uh, we may, we're probably going to continue recording new episodes during the summer, but it might only be one episode a month just because uh, summer is just a really busy time for, for all of us. So it's, it's harder to find that time to, to squeeze in there. But uh, we are on two new platforms that I'm excited about. One is called PocketNet. I won't go into it uh, too much detail. You can find a link below, but Pocketnet basically is a decentralized social media platform built on uh, the blockchain. It's sensor proof and it's um, they, they promote free freedom of speech. Um, it doesn't mean you have the right to they, there is it's moderated by the users, but uh, it's a cool technology and uh, locations. Facebook were Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a, uh, you know, it's, 
uh, locations unknown is on there and we're getting our content up there and it's it's a cool technology you should check it out we are are also on rumble which is a, an alternative to youtube so uh check out both those platforms uh in the links below finally i know this is some people uh, always yell at us we're going too long but we have a case update um one of our listeners messaged us actually a couple of them uh on the bobby buys up case so we won't i won't go into too much detail joe but apparently uh more than 60 years after uh he went missing federal investigators have obtained uh what they believe to be the boy's skull and they haven't done dna testing on it yet so they're not 100 percent sure it's him but they're pretty pretty sure that it is his skull and uh it turns out that the, their leading theory now is that one yep, of the camp yep, tell, counselors tell, tell, tell the listeners <laughs> tell the listeners what the leading theory is so i can't remember i think it was joe or myself one of us uh, it was me it was joe <laughs> so yeah so the lead, leading theory now is that one of the camp counselors was uh, the one that abducted him and killed him and they say that because three of the camp counselors went on later in their lives to sexually abuse children um Ooh. so well, yeah, now, yeah, that's no longer cause for celebration. Well, it never was. No, but, but the it, fact that the fact that we glean that from the data we got. Yeah, um, <laughs> we're not celebrating any of no. that. We're just celebrating that Joe was re- what uh, right for once. <laughs> for once, and the funny thing is, if I go back and listen, it's probably like you. <laughs> I'm just claiming credit for it. I honestly can't remember. That was uh, that was one of our earlier episodes. I so. thought it was for sure one of the ones I came up with, but after you questioned it, now I don't know. Now, if any more information comes out about that case, we may do a, a quick follow-up episode, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so finally, I'm done with updates, Joe. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's gear up and get out to explore locations unknown. Throughout history, there have always been tales of secretive groups that operate in the shadows and have control over the daily lives of our population. Prominent members of society, such as actors, musicians, business leaders, and even presidents, to this day count themselves among the members of these secretive groups. In this episode, we will investigate some of the most prominent secret societies. This is an episode I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, I find secret societies fascinating, the, the history around them fascinating. Um, there's I couldn't been a agree lot of, more. Couldn't yeah. agree more, and my wife is super excited for us to do this show because she's obsessed with secret societies. Yeah, it's just it's something fascinating about, about them, and there's tons of conspiracy theories around them. I'm sure a lot of you have probably heard Alex Jones talk about Bohemia, uh, Bohemian Grove on the Joe Rogan podcast. And, you know, like Joe said, a ton of famous and powerful people have been members of these uh, secretive groups. And, uh, you know, Joe and I like to kind of switch up the episodes. And this will be a lot different than what we normally do. It's kind of going to go, you know into the history of the groups and then kind of some of the conspiracies. So, Well, I think people are so fascinated because unlike like UFOs or things like that, where it takes a, a, a much larger grasp of the imagination, Yeah, a lot of these things are very, very, very real. Oh, yeah. And there's people that are in them that have admitted to being in them, but they don't disclose what actually happened. So it's, it's this thing that's like, it's a theory that exists. There's a lot of facts about it, but you still can't touch it unless you're part of this elite group. So it makes it way more exciting. Yeah, and all of the secret societies that we're going to talk about really do exist. And as you see here in a couple seconds, when I kind of start with the history of these secret societies, they go back thousands of years. So they've been an integral part of the human experience for almost as long as 
you know, modern humans have been been around. So uh, it it's shaped a lot of society that we know of today. So yep, we learned how to do fire, then started excluding people based on stature <laughs> immediately. <Yeah. laughs> so I'm gonna jump right into just kind of the overall history first of you know secret societies, and this isn't by you know no way a detailed history of all of this. This is kind of a it, almost like a drive-by. There's a lot of really good history podcasts out there that will die, you know, spend hours and multiple episodes just talking about each one of these secret societies. So yeah, we could do a three-part series on Bohemian Grove by itself. Absolutely, and maybe we should in the future. <laughs> right, we can. Um, so, like I said, secret societies have been around for a long time. There's historical evidence of secret societies that were involved with the mystery of religions in ancient Egypt and Greece uh, in Rome, uh, where they had secret rites, initiations, and revelations of, you know, ancient wisdom. Uh, So you had those kinds of secret societies. Then you also had uh, secret societies that uh, people had to adopt out of necessity to, you know, survive like suppression and persecution. Um, some of the mo- the earliest secret societies around this type of group were uh, Christians in uh, pagan Rome. And, you know, at that time, you know, Christians were highly persecuted by Rome and, you know, they would form these groups to kind of, you know, practice the religion underground and communicate, you know, through secret methods. And this went all the way into the Middle Ages, those kinds of groups. So um, these groups were so uh, widespread that the church actually, the Catholic church at during the Middle Ages actually created an inquisition to hunt them down and prosecute their men- members. So you'll, you'll see kind of a trend throughout the history of secret societies that the powers that be don't like them. Um, they, they try to hunt them down, shut them down. Um, so it's, it's super interesting that you kind of see the same kind of thread throughout history. Uh, so medieval guilds resorted to, uh, solemn initiate initiatory oaths and other elements of secrecy, primarily for economic self-protection. So you had people forming these groups to kind of protect their own wealth. Uh, throughout uh, throughout history, revolutionaries, subversive, and conspiratorial groups have organized secretly, uh, as is in the case of the Sons of Liberty in the American colonies. So here you have, once again, a different type of group forming to, you know, kind of, it reminds me of that initial scene in the Mel Gibson movie, The Patriot, where yes. yep. the, they're in that church and they're talking about, you know, they're trying, you know, we should attack the British and, you know, some of them didn't want to do it and some of them did, you know, that would be kind of like a Sons of Liberty type group. They're meeting to, you know, they want their independence. <laughs> a great so, movie, by the way. I love yeah, that movie. Not very historically accurate, but a great movie. No, but it's just a good movie. <laughs> um, so the repression of liberal, natural, uh, nat- nationalists and Republican movements in Europe in the 19th century, for example, produced an underground network of revolutionary secret societies such as the Italian uh, Carbonari. So uh, this isn't just one of the biggest secret groups you always hear about is the Freemasons, but um, a lot of these groups had their origins in Europe. Um, So other examples can be found in the Irish uh, Fenian Society and the Decembrists of Imperial Russia. So... Uh, you've got, you know, these groups pop up all over the place. Um, the very existence of secret societies has often prompted antagonism and fostered accusations of immortality, subversion, and heresy. Uh, such claims were made against the Roman mystery cults and were used to justify the ruthless suppression of the Knights Templar in the early 14th century. Um, so another major society, uh, secret group that came out of Europe in the medieval times was the Illuminati. And this became uh, something of a fad among Europe's intellectual and political elite in the late 18th century. And it almost, it made it into like a, an attention seeking entity for the secret society. 
It was like Facebook before they let everybody sign up. <laughs> yeah. Like you could, only if you went to certain universities, you could get in. So then everyone wanted in. Uh, and in 1826, the disappearance of William Morgan, a New York bricklayer who had threatened to expose the secret teachings of the Freemasons, fueled the growth of the anti-Masonic movement. So you, now you even have groups that are formed to counter some of these uh, secret societies. Oh, yeah. There's religions that consider like uh, the involvement in, in some of those societies is very against what the church teaches. Yeah. So, you know, that is a very high level, you know, very basic history of kind of some of the secret societies that have, you know, come and gone through the ages. And I, the, what we're going to talk about next are probably the most famous secret societies, the ones you probably, you may or may not know the history behind them, but you've definitely heard their names. And there's lots of movies about, you know, the, what's the movie with um, the cat, the guy who was in Castaway. He was in, D- da Vinci. Tom Hanks? Yeah. What, what? <laughs> the Da Vinci you Code. T- yeah, you don't yeah. remember Tom Hanks' name? <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah, so the first major secret society we're going to talk about is the Knights Templar. So the Knights Templar were warriors that were dedicated to protecting Christian pilgrims to the Holy Land during the Crusades. So we're talking... The Middle Ages, a long time ago, the uh, Knights Templar uh, were formed around uh, 1118 um, when a French knight, and now I apologize, I am going to butcher this name. I think it's uh, Hugh de Pain. Pains? Yeah, Hugh de Pain. Hugh, Hugh de Pain. Hugh de Pain. He was a French knight. He created the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ and the Temple of Solomon or the Knights Templar. Uh, they, this group was headquartered at Temple Mount in Jerusalem, and members pledged to live a life of chastity, obedience, pover- and poverty, abstaining from gam- gambling, alcohol, and even swearing. So, very uh, well, I'm pi- out. <laughs> <laughs> very, um, you know, pious individuals um, devoted to their religion and protecting it. Uh, so, the Knights Templar were known for more than just their military uh, immoral lifestyle. They actually became one of the most wealthy and powerful forces in Europe. Uh, After setting up a bank that allowed pilgrims to deposit money in their home countries and then withdraw it in the Holy Land. So that is a really cool fact that I did not know. It was almost kind of like the first uh, online bank. bank. First online bank, you know? You uh, You could go to a bank in Europe and deposit, you know, you know, pound of gold and travel to the Holy Land and then get that pound of gold back without actually carrying it with you. Because back then, probably making that trip from Europe to Jerusalem was dangerous. Yeah, you have the risk of like marauders and other people trying to basically steal all your things so you can deposit your wealth somewhere and then have a record of it. Yeah, so that is a really interesting fact, and uh, that was the first blockchain, Mike. <laughs> I guess proof of Not, stake. It was proof right. of stake, <laughs> right? I just wonder how they they must have had like a, a courier by horse, you know, going yeah, back sure, and yeah, forth. Yeah, they just yeah, that it's got it had to have been rife with just people altering the ledgers. But, oh yeah, uh, corruption. But but still, hey, good for them. <laughs> yeah, really interesting uh, uh, banking concept. You know, it started way back when. So uh, their influence swelled to new highs in 1139 when Pope uh, Innocent II issued a papal bull exempting, uh, sorry, a papal bulletin <laughs> exempting them from paying taxes and decreeing that the only authority they had to answer to was the Pope. So this, that's huge. So I, I love the history of the, you know, the Middle Ages and uh, a lot of the, the countries in Europe basically followed what the Pope did, said. So these guys were able to go country to country and kind of were above the law. Like diplomatic immunity? Yeah, if the Pope sanctioned what they were doing, the local authorities in a given country you know, couldn't stop them. So they had a lot of authority to carry out, you know, the missions that they were given, which I think probably added to their mystique. Sure. Um, So 
At the apex of their power, the Knights Templar owned the island of Cyprus, a fleet of ships, and lent money to kings. But not all kings were happy customers. So, uh, you know, they became they're incredibly wealthy. You know, they owned an island. They had a fleet of ships, and they were so wealthy they would lend kings money. I mean, that's that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's the Iron Bank. Yeah, pretty from pretty Game much. of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> So, so that that like goes directly against their whole thing of poverty, or are they they live their lives in poverty, but the group themselves being a bank and this, I mean, they basically built like a massive trade organization, but with currency. Yeah, I, I'm assuming, and we'll get corrected if we're wrong, but I'm assuming the actual knights lived a life of poverty, but the organization itself would lend yeah. money. Um, it's almost kind of like the military wing of the Catholic Church at the time. Yeah, okay, that makes um, sense. So, you know, that was the peak of the Knights Templar, and once the Crusades came to an end, uh, the kind of the power of the, the Knights of Templar kind of waned. They withdrew uh, to Paris, where they then kind of just focused on their banking endeavors. And on Smart I financial move, for sure. <laughs> right. So on October 13th, 1307, King Philip... Uh, the sixth of France, the fourth, fourth, my bad, fourth of France, whom the Knights Templar had denied additional loans, had a group of knights arrested and tortured until they made false c confessions of depravity. So uh, you can see around this time that, you know, the rulers of these various countries were growing tired of the Knights Templar. They probably, you know, for hundreds of years, they've been doing what they want. And this king didn't get a loan from him. So he's like, well, you know what? We're going to detain you. <laughs> so, uh, and it gets even worse. In 1309, as the city of Paris watched, dozens of Knights uh, Templar were burned at the stake for their alleged crimes. So, uh, you know, not a great ending for the Knights <laughs> by any yeah. stretch. Um, uh, and in 1312, under pressure from the French cr crown, Pope Clement V formally dissolved the order in 1312 and redistributed the wealth. So... Uh, they, you know, they were around for a few hundred years and, uh, had a pretty, uh, bloody end to their organization, but rumors that the Knights Templar guarded artifacts like the Holy Grail and the Shroud of Turin began bubbling up among conspiracy theorists. This has always kind of been the conspiracy about the Knights Templar. Yeah. And obviously popular films like the Da Vinci Code continued to inspire and this curiosity. Indiana Jones. <laughs> yes. You can't forget about Indiana Jones. Um, so that's kind of a, a brief history of the Knights Templar. The next secret society, I think everyone's probably heard of. They at least know the name, but the Freemasons. Yeah. They're still, you can see Masonic temples all over the place still. Yeah. Uh, so the Freemasons can trace their origins to the Middle Ages in Europe, uh, a time when most craftsmen were organized into local guilds. Uh, so, for example, cathedral builders, uh, by nature of their profession, had to travel from city to city. And they identified one another via signs of their trade, like a builder's square and compass in the Freemasons' uh, iconic symbol. So Freemasons, Freemasonry, as we know it today, was founded in 1717 when four London lodges merged to form England's first Grand Lodge. Uh, after this happened, Freemasonry quickly spread across Europe and eventually into the American colonies. Now, the, the history of the Freemasons uh, says that it's not a religion but the members of the Freemasons are encouraged to believe in a supreme being or a grand architect of the universe. Okay. Uh, yeah. And Masonic temp temples and secret rituals have brought them into conflict with the Catholic Church. So, you know, another kind of common theme. <laughs> the uh, Church first condemned the Freemasons in 1738 and has gone on to issue around 20 decrees against them. As recently as 1985, Roman Catholic bishops restated over 200 years worth of these strictures in the face of an increased number of Catholics joining the order. So, uh, you know, even in modern times, uh, you know, a group like the Freemasons still kind of, you know, yeah, I'd love to know the reason why. Yeah, I, uh, you know, we're not going to dive that deep into it um, in this episode, but um, 
there's some great when I was doing research for these, there's some great podcasts out there that are all history focused and really go into, you know, the Freemasons. Um, so I, I would go check those out. Um, so, the, you know, the church wasn't the only enemy of the Freemasons. Uh, the secrecy of the Masons garnered such distrust in the early in early America that inspired America's first third party, the anti Masonic party. So another little interesting fact, the the first kind of third political party in the U.S. was actually an anti party against <laughs> the Freemasons. So um, very, uh, very interesting his history. And there's been a lot of very powerful people that have been members of the Freemasons, including 13 of the 39 men who signed the U.S. Constitution. Uh, they were uh, George. Was Some of them were George Washington, James Monroe, uh, Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock and Paul Revere. So um, if you are lucky enough to become a Freemason, you are in an esteemed company. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and you know the one thing in pop culture that I remember about the Freemasons. You remember that Simpsons episode, The Stonecutters? Yes. <laughs> oh, that that's it's an old one, but it uh, is an old one. It's so good though. It's yeah, so on point. Yeah, it's mocking the the whole Freemason uh, society, but a, a really good episode. So, moving on to our next secret society. This is another one you probably have all heard of, but you may not know some of the history behind it. Uh, the Illuminati. So the Illuminati were founded uh, in May 1st, 1776 in Bavaria. And uh, Joe, you're good with German names. What's that? Uh, uh, Weish Weishat? Weishup? Weishupt. Weishupt? Yeah, I know. So it was started by a guy named Adam Weishupt, and he was... Um, you know, concerned about the power of the conservative Catholic Church and the Bavarian monarchy, so he sought to cast aside organized religion in favor of a new form of illumination through reason. Uh, in, he was inspired by the spread of enlightenment across Europe. He also drew upon ideas expressed by the Jesuits, which he was a former member of, uh, the mystery of the seven sages of Memphis and the Kabbalah and Freemasons. So, he, uh, you know, seemed like a real free thinker for the time. Um, and, you know, this is one of those groups that was kind of born out of frustration with the elites and the, the power structure at the time. Um, so he uh, recruited heavily from the Freemasons, uh, Freemasons infiltrating Masonic lodges in his quest to recruit some of the wealthiest and most influential men in Europe. Uh, members of the Bavarian Illuminati, referred to as uh, perfectibilists, uh, were broken into three tiers of increasing power and drawn from societal elites, including noble, noblemen like former Freemason Baron von Nigge and writer Jonathan Wolfgang. So uh, a lot of famous people are also in the Illuminati. And all this is really cool. All communication was uh, in the form of cipher, and members were given classical nicknames. So Weishup's uh, name was Spartacus. So uh, kind of like a little James Bond stuff going on there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the organ organization flourished before being stamped out by Carl Theodore of Bavaria, who issued an edict making membership in the Illuminati punishable by death in 1787. Dang. So, yeah. Everyone's raining down hard on these groups, which just makes them more mysterious. Yeah, you know, I mean, back then there was no internet, there was no social media. I mean, there was, you know, books and, but, you know, a lot of people couldn't read. And, you know, these groups were a way to subvert, you know, from the, you know, the powers that be. So, sure. And, you know, throughout history, any, anytime, a, you know, a, someone in authority is threatened, they, they come down hard. So, sure. Uh, you see this with all these groups. So, uh, but the death of the Bavarian Illuminati did not quell gossip about their clandestine activities. And conspiracy theorists have linked the group to everything from the French Revolution to the assassination of JFK. They pull all the strings. Yeah. All of them. You'll, <laughs> I keep talking about common commonalities among all these groups. There's a lot of commonality in the conspiracy theories. You, yeah. You kind of get everything in the kitchen sink thrown at them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also so the Illuminati served as inspiration for Dan Brown's Angel and Demons, uh, which was also a movie. 
So interesting a little history on the Illuminati. Well, and it was it was the lead singer of Imagine Dragons made a video saying that he was coming out of the Illuminati and outing everybody, but it was like a joke. <laughs> it was like a joke where he said like Beyonce's in it, like oh, I, I'm risking my life even saying this. Like he made a YouTube video. It's hilarious. Wow, that's funny because a lot of people thought it was real. Yeah, and then he came out and said he was just messing with everybody or something, or or. It's real, and they made him say he was messing with everybody because they were going to kill him. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, if it's real, I doubt they would let him do that. But yep. <laughs> um, so the the next secret society we'll we'll briefly touch on is one that you may not have heard of. It's lesser known, but um, still very influential: uh, the Skull and Bones Society. So this is a homegrown in the United States secret society. Uh, the Order of the Skull and Bones was founded at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut in 1832. The Skull and Bones founder, William Huntington Russell, was inspired by an occult society he visited in Germany. His co-founder was Alfonso Taft, future Secretary of War under President Grant and father of President William Howard Taft, uh, who would also become a Skull and Bones member. So you can see a connection here. Pretty much every president in the United States has been a member of these secretive organizations, um, which, you know, it's not shocking. They're some of the most powerful people on the planet. Um, so uh, there, the Skull and Bones is still in existence today, and there are prominent, they're called Bonesmen. <laughs> there's, a pr there's prominent list of uh, Bonesmen that include several presidents and modern-day power brokers. So uh, very powerful group. And, uh, you know, conspiracy theories for this one. We're going to go deeper into conspiracy theories, but um, a controversial 1986 expose called America's Secret Establishment by Anthony Sutton claimed that Skull and, Boin Skull and Bones was out to create a new world order run by the Bonesmen, prompting a myriad of conspiracy theories. So, uh, you know, yeah, new I don't I don't know anything about I've always heard this one, but I know nothing about it. So. Yeah, that it, one's mysterious to me. Yeah, and I think uh, like both Bushes were members of the Skull and Bones uh, order. Um, yeah, a lot of famous people. I feel like that makes it more of a legit secret society that probably pulls strings because I don't know anything about it. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, like I said, it's it's still in existence, and um, the the conspiracy theories are less crazy and more like, yeah, these powerful people get together and are trying to run the world. <laughs> yeah. Because um, they are. Right. Uh, our final major uh, secret society that probably not a lot of people have heard of before. I, I've heard of it. I, I don't I didn't know how the name came to be. So this was very interesting for me to research. But the Bilderberg Group, I'm sure, Joe, you've probably heard of Bilderberg. Yeah, just because you and I are into the same stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, this all stemmed from a meeting in 1984, that was held at the Hotel de Bilden Bilderberg in the Netherlands, which is I how... that's where the name comes from. <laughs> that is where the name comes from. It was uh, convened by Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands, and it was a gathering of powerful politicians from North America and Europe designed to foster warmer relations between the two continents among fears of growing anti-Americanism in Europe. While it was not strictly a secret society like the Illuminati or the Freemasons, the Bilderberg's high-profile attendees, previous guests have included Bill Clinton, Margaret Thatcher, Angela Merkel, Tony Blair, Henry Kissinger, uh, and its use of the Chatham, <clears throat> Chatham, Chatham. House, uh, Chatham House rule blocking attendees from sharing what actually happens at the meetings gives the, you know, kind of an air of mystery around the group and uh obviously journalists are barred from reporting on it and meeting minutes are not released so um you know this is a very believe obviously it's probably not uh, you know a formal secret society but uh it's whenever you get that many high power high profile powerful people together you do wonder what they're talking about you know are they like you know it's, sharing like i you know here's where our aliens are kept like where do you guys keep yours and 
You know, like yeah, so the official rule is participants are free to use the information received, but neither the identity nor the affiliation of the speaker nor that of any other participant must be revealed. Okay. So it's like a sharing of information that you can then take to your country or business or whatever, yeah. uh, but you can't disclose who said it, why they said it, where it came from. Like, you have to treat it as almost it, it manifested in you organically. Okay. So basically, they kind of they share information and ideas, and then these leaders can then go back to their country and implement them without revealing who came up with them or where they got this information? Yeah, that's my guess. I'm sure some other stuff goes on that doesn't get implemented or shared that <laughs> they just stayed wouldn't you like, with. Wouldn't you like to be a fly in the wall for one of those meetings? <laughs> yeah, that's that's where that's where here's the deal. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put the asterisk over this like I really like Alex Jones. I think he's crazy. I used to think he was a complete nut job, but every day that goes by more and more of the stuff he's screaming about and going crazy about seems to be turning out correct. He got into, was it Bohemian Grove? Like yeah, I was going to talk about that. Yeah. Next. Yeah. So I won't get into it, but like that's where every now and then when I hear him ranting about crazy stuff and we talk about like, man, wouldn't you love to be in on the stuff they're talking? Like he was, <laughs> maybe that's why he's crazy. Because he has to like have all that in his head, and he knows what's happening. Yeah. So I every now and then I think about when he says crazy things, and I'm just like, that's insane. And then it kind of comes true, and I'm like, oh man, that's why he's insane. Yeah. I mean, I guess I I'm not a, a I would say a fan of Alex Jones. You got to parse through all the crazy stuff, but you know he yes. has he has said some things that have eventually come true. So uh it's interesting but yeah i mean he uh he's crazy he's a crazy that's, man that's why I, I can't watch his show i've never watched a no full info. it's it's nuts but i've watched all the times he's gone on rogan and i really like it because rogan moderates him and isn't afraid to call him out on his on his stuff yeah because he they, does sometimes spout just absolute nonsense yeah and he'll call him out on it so it's yeah. like a really good way to go through and say okay this guy knows a lot he's yeah. actually a smart guy He's just like on a whole other level of whatever it is. You know, I, I think yeah. he drinks a lot, but he's he's going to have a heart attack or something. Yeah, I've never, never been able to sit through his actual show. Yeah, but it's, it's just screaming and craziness. But it's when you have a filter like Joe Rogan stopping him and fact checking him the entire time, it's actually very educational. And I, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. I would, I would, I, to, to play the devil's advocate, I would just, I, I, anything he says, just you know, with a grain of salt too. Oh, Oh, hundred percent. Joe and I aren't saying that we, uh, you know, he's not. I, I get a lot of entertainment listening to the clips of him on Rogan, but yeah, <laughs> um, I don't base anything in my life <laughs> around anything he says. <laughs> but I do get a lot of uh, fun entertainment value when I, I listen to him, and like Joe said, he, he shockingly has been. Uh, right on some things he said. I, I honestly can't remember all of the stuff, but uh, if you're you know interested to hear some of the the crazy stuff he said, just go over to Joe Rogan's podcast and find the episode. Yeah, I wouldn't season. watch his show. Go to Rogan's show, and you'll you'll get a moderator to his yeah. insanity. Um, so I just wanted to mention, um, kind of an honorable mention, uh, since we you know talked about Alex Jones, uh, Bohemian Grove. So Bohemian Grove was uh, formed in uh, 1872 and it, it, as a meeting of the rich and powerful to escape frontier culture or uncivilized interests of common men. Uh, the attendees claim they are there for social reasons, but many believe uh, they use the meetings for more sinister reasons. And um, I can't remember the specifics, but Alex Jones did infiltrate Bohemian Grove, I think, in the early 90s. Yep. And filmed some crazy like rituals around the fire with, you know, costumes and all kinds of weird stuff going on. And yeah, it was super gnarly. I think you can find the video on the internet. It's, like, it's, it's on YouTube or it's, something. It's somewhere. You just go search for it if you want to see that. This is when we have, uh, when we do these shows live, like we'll splice it in. We'll actually yeah. present the stuff. It'll be so great. <laughs> and it, it's funny. They, uh, there's, there's, uh, like Richard Nixon. Uh, the Nixon tapes, he's on tape making fun of the people at Bohemian, Bohemian Grove. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if you've ever – I'm not going to uh, recite any of the stuff he says because it's a little uh, 
you know, for 2021, we not appropriate for our podcast. Yes. <laughs> but it, you can go listen to those tapes. They're out on the internet. He, uh, he makes fun of them. I think uh, Ronald Reagan's on tape too, making fun of uh, Bohemian Grove. So uh, it, it does exist. It's a real thing. People have infiltrated it. Uh, journalists have uh, in the past infiltrated Bohemian Grove. There's been several journalists not recently, but in the eighties and nineties that have gotten in and, you know, photo documented the grounds and what happened. Um, I think one journalist was, cause it supposedly goes for 16 days. He was in for, he got in there for nine days before they found out he wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah. So, and, um, cause I just looked it up. It is on the internet. Uh, you have to search on duck, duck, go. Cause on Google, it, it didn't pull anything up. So go on okay. duck, duck, go for the search. So Which just makes it even more <laughs> suspect. So yeah, it's uh, it, it's interesting. Alex Jones, the you know crazy Alex Jones, adds another kind of fascinating sidebar to Bohemian Grove. And finally, Joe, I have to mention we're talking about secret societies. The Syndicate from X Files. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Smoking Man. So for I won't go into it very much because it's obviously f- uh, fake. It's from the show and movies, but. The syndicate was a group of men from very, all the major countries in the world. Basically, they were a shadow a shadow government that was higher than the actual governments in place, and they were the ones that are actually pulling all the strings of everything that was going on, and they were in contact with aliens and all kinds of crazy stuff, and it's super cool. I, I think that's probably where my initial fascination with secret societies came from is the syndicate from the (laughs) X-Files. So uh, that is basically a rundown of the, the, the bigger, more well-known secret societies. If you do a Google search on them, there's dozens throughout history that have come and gone smaller ones that are, you know, less known, but pretty interesting. I I mean, you can go down the rabbit hole reading about this stuff. Yeah. Um, So now we're going to get into the fun part of talking about some of the conspiracy theories surrounding these societies. <laughs> so we're going to start with skull and bones because that's a uh, homegrown in, the, in America. So like I, I said earlier, a lot of these people throw like everything in the kitchen sink at these societies. Yeah. And some of them are just ridiculous because there's like a really well-documented other explanation for it. Yeah. The free ma- we'll get when we get into the Freemasons, that one, there's so many conspiracy theories about the Freemasons. It's kind of funny. Uh, but so the skull and bones, obviously they've been blamed for everything from the nuclear bomb to the Kennedy assassination. Which uh, the creation of the nuclear bomb is well-documented. Like, uh, like the project was secretive, but then it was, release when everyone else figured it out because it didn't matter to keep it secret anymore so. yeah it will actually talk uh down the list here there's actually one of the secret societies the rumor was that the manhattan project came up at one of the, the societies and it turned out to be true so ah. um, and for those of you who don't know your history the manhattan project was the top secret program during world war ii that uh led to the development of the first atomic bomb so Um, you know, the skull and bones society has been rumored to be a branch of the Illuminati uh, since it was founded, um, by a German university alumni following the order's suppression in their native land. Uh, so there's also rumors that the skull and bones society is the true group that controls the CIA. So that's a pretty wild conspiracy theory because the CIA, you know, one of the most secretive government organizations in the world is controlled by an even more secretive organization. Just kind of that, that like, (laughs) I'm not going to go out and say, believe that, but there's some pretty crazy stuff that's been proven and stuff that happens with the CIA that just like, even in recent events of things that politicians that are high up at the CIA, the, some of the things they said have been ghastly in my opinion of like, you don't mess with the intelligence community and then something happens to the person who was messing with the intelligence community. There's a lot of coincidences I'll say that makes me put the belief that there's something going on there well above conspiracy. I'd say 
a notch above being called a conspiracy theory. That I would, is my own personal my own personal opinion. I would love to do a whole episode on the CIA, but I'm also afraid to do an episode on the CIA. <laughs> I, I think it's our job as super popular podcasters that have almost cracked the top 100 in true crime in the United States to do our listeners justice and report that. Well, maybe down the road we will do a full episode on the CIA because it is a fascinating organization. The history of it's fascinating. Uh, lots of controversy. They've yes. done a lot of. I'm an American, and I can admit they've done a lot of harm at times around the world. <laughs> I think uh, probably more harm than good. Probably, and uh, but it's still a, a fascinating history, and I I love like. James Bond type movies, uh, you know, Mission Impossible. Uh, those movies are so cool and fun to watch. So, um, all right, moving on to some conspiracy theories about the Illuminati. So, uh, the group was broken up by the German authorities after the French Revolution, but modern conspiracy theorists assert the group survived and now operates as a sinister shadow government, directing world industry and politics as they see fit. So, you know, that's your. You know, like the X-Files, uh, the shadow government above all other governments. Um, other theorists uh, contend that a variety of historical events were orchestrated by the Illuminati, including the French Revolution, the Battle of Waterloo, the assassination of JFK, and the alleged uh, communist plot to hasten the New World Order by infiltrating Hollywood. So, um, you know... A lot of a lot of stuff going on there. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's even claimed by some members of the Illuminati uh, that certain people in the organization have extraordinary abilities, such as reading auras and using numerology to predict the future. So now we're getting into the land of just absolute science fiction. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, still kind of kind of cool to think about. Um. So now in Freemasons, this one hands down wins for the most crazy conspiracy theories. Uh, I don't know why it's the Freemasons and not some of these other ones, but it's kind of like any crazy thing somebody says, they say the Freemasons did it. Yeah. <laughs> so It's just an easy go-to. Yeah. So uh, f right off the bat, some people uh, contend that the Freemasons designed the pyramids. <laughs> Um, once again, they also help plot the French Revolution, and uh, they're keeping you know the tradition of the Knights Templar going. So that those... I think they also built the Tic Tac device that Commander David Fravor <laughs> saw. Yeah, why don't we just lump that in there too? Right. Uh, some in England believe that uh, the British judiciary system is heavily infiltrated with Masons who give fellow Masons the benefit of the doubt in court, subverting the legal system. Now, that is a conspiracy theory. I don't find that far-fetched. Yep, I agree with that. Maybe not so much anymore, but I can easily see these. Well, here's the deal. Why, why not? If you have this group of people that are friends, and among that group of people are people like judges or lawyers presidents. or things like that, presidents. <laughs> yeah, and you get into trouble, but you're buddies with all the people that hand down the punishment. It's going to be a lot less of a bad punishment. Yeah, I mean... It, you see this in pop culture all the time. Uh, something that just popped in my head. Uh, I don't know if Joe. I, you... I think that's on every level. If you're a cop and your buddy's a cop and you get caught speeding and he pulls you over, you're not getting a ticket if it's not egregious. I mean, yeah. that's, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that's just reality. So absolutely, if you have all these prominent members of society in a group and you're part of that group, you're going to get the benefits of those that the, those people's collective power. Exactly. Now, it's funny, too, with these uh, societies. They all kind of seem to, like, intermingle with each other. So um, some believe that the Freemasons overlap or are controlled by the Illuminati, <laughs> especially in higher degrees. They, uh, they say Illuminati Freemasons secretly control uh, many aspects of society and government and are working to establish, once again, the New World Order. Um, and some have even said that, uh, the, uh, th conspiracy theories involving the Freemasons and the Illuminati also include the Knights Templar and, uh, uh, Jewish people. So as part of the supposed plan for universal control of society. Now, this is something that I haven't really 
brought up much in this episode, but there is a lot of, you see in the history of these groups, there is a lot of kind of anti-Semitic views against Jewish people. And, you know, that's, I, that's not uncommon. I think, you know, Jewish people throughout history have been obviously persecuted from thousands of years ago to, you know, modern day. And it, it's not at all surprising that, you know, some of these groups' main tenants are, you know, probably anti-Semitic. Uh, uh, you're, you're, you're dangling very close to involving yourself in a Middle Eastern conflict right now that will divide <laughs> all of our listeners. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're, not, we're not, a, not a current events episode for uh, geopolitical yeah. tensions. So uh, we will, we're going to. We're going to stay out of that one and leave the... Move, pro- move along, move along. Move we'll, <laughs> we'll let the professionals deal with what's going on there. Um, <laughs> Are there any professionals? Oh, I don't... I have no comment. <laughs> On either side? Is it just a bunch of people who kind of know some things? Being I th- very passionate about it? I think uh, you have a long history of you know, certain groups of people that have fought each other for thousands of years, and they have you know some long-seated... Uh, things they got to resolve between them <laughs> i think they need to get jordan peterson out there to moderate and it will be all fixed there you go or De- <laughs> or dennis rodman dennis rodman dennis rodman kim jong-un jordan peterson and bill maher there, <laughs> there we they'll go they'll solve they'll, they'll they'll all solve it boy yeah that that's a topic <laughs> for a different podcast <laughs> yeah yeah not even our podcast no go somewhere else for that um so yeah moving on to some even crazier stuff about the freemasons so this is a wild theory uh the freemasons some believe the freemasons are behind income taxes in the u.s well no i hate the freemasons <laughs> One convicted tax protester has charged that law enforcement officials who surrounded his property in a standoff over his refusal to surrender after his conviction were part of uh, a Zionist. There's the uh, anti-Semitic stuff coming in. Illuminati Freemason movement. The New Hampshire union leader also reported that the, the Browns believe the IRS and federal income tax are part of a deliberate plot to perpetrate plot perpetrated by the Freemasons to control the American people and eventually the world. So um, wild theory there about something as boring as income taxes. <laughs> oh, and here's a good one. Uh, some say the Freemasons faked the moon landings. <laughs> Their response, like they built the set. Yeah, like they were totally running it and in charge of faking the moon landings. Um, I, I mean, let's we got to hand it to that organization because there's so many companies that can't do one thing very well. I mean, they are just nailing space uh, taxes. Yeah, the CIA, they, like it went flawlessly. I get very defensive when people talk about the moon landing being faked because I'm a big space buff, and with a powerful enough telescope, you can actually see the footprints of the astronauts on the moon. It, it it's not Mike. That is a projection. <laughs> it's image. <laughs> So, of course, they are going to put that in the image, Mike. Of course. Well, and this goes into the next theory. They are... The projector is under the bottom of flat Earth, pointing out. Well, the free... <laughs> <laughs> One of the conspiracies is, is the Freemasons have infiltrated NASA to deceive the public to hide the Earth being flat. So Exactly. That's what I told you. The projector's on the bottom, <laughs> we're on the top, and we project the image of space. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, Crazy stuff there. I the Apollo moon landings were absolutely not faked, and the Earth is round. <laughs> yep. Um, no, it's it's one of those projectors that uh, the teachers had in school with like the magnifying glass in the top. Of the oh yeah, to and the you bottom. could r- write on it with like a yeah. There's marker. just a huge one of those underneath flat Earth, <laughs> and it's a series of mirrors that make space. So there so, you go. Um, so <laughs> here's a, a controversial conspiracy theory. Um, uh, the theory goes that the September 11th attacks were astrological in nature as part of a hidden war between the masonry and Islam. So I don't even know how to unpack that one. I'm probably just going to yeah. move on. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah that's, just go to the next one. Uh, this one may be the, the absolute craziest. Um, some people contend that humanoid reptiles are behind secret societies like the Freemasons and the Illuminati. You got to look for that sideways blinking. That's how you can see it. <laughs> and, uh, Two sna- sets of eyelids. Snake-like tongue. Yep. 
Um, and finally, for uh, the Freemasons, if they don't have a busy enough schedule, you know, <laughs> doing all of the income tax stuff and faking moon landings and stuff, they've also been involved in most of the famous murders uh, throughout the years, including uh, Jack the Ripper uh, and John F. Kennedy. So um, they are kind of the Swiss army knife of secret societies. <laughs> they can do it all. Yep. yep. Um, so just a couple more theories, and then Joe and I will just kind of talk about um, what we just talked about. So one of the crazy theories about the Bilderberg Group is that the group is run by Nazis, and it's, in try it's trying to impose a one-world government, and it runs the U.S. Republican Party. So, so, like, it's still run by Nazis? Yeah. So this this could be my ignorance. <laughs> what is it with people thinking, like, Nazis are still a thing? I, I are, don't know. Like, are they've gone into this also secret society level now? Like, it, you know, it's in pop culture. The other day, I was just. So that's watching. what I'm saying. Like, I, people yeah. call people Nazis constantly, and like, is it just like a term now, like a verb? Maybe it's a or term. Do the, or do people think like that Nazis still exist, and there's like a Nazi authority doing stuff somewhere? Well, I mean, this conspiracy theory clearly thinks that Nazis are running things behind the scenes and trying to impose a one world government. I mean, in pop culture, just for example, the other day I was watching um, the sum of all fears with Ben Affleck. Another and fantastic movie. Great movie. Great book. Uh, Jack Ryan movie. And uh, you know, one of the leading uh, bad guys in the movie that, you know, caused all the, the problems in the movie was a Nazi. He had a, like a Nazi symbol on his watch. So you see this in pop culture. I think, uh, I think part of the problem is just keep you, the back channels open. Yeah. I think you have some people that just uh, if they, you know, if someone is acting like a fascist, they just say they're a Nazi kind of like broadly speaking. Or I think some people just don't know their history. And I don't know. Who knows what it is? That's that's for another time, but this group, the Bilderberg group apparently is uh run by Nazis, so watch out for them. Yeah. Um, and finally, I mentioned this earlier in the episode, the Bohemian Grove, uh, for a long time, it was there was a conspiracy that they had planned the Manhattan Project at the Bohemian Grove, and then it turns out they did. And it didn't I was going to say, that, that sounds reasonable, like a big meeting of powerful people talking about important things. Like, that was not, an, in, like, so was Oppenheimer there, or was it like the officials were there, and then they got Oppenheimer to run it? Uh, I think, like, the, like, probably the president was there and yeah. you know, other world leaders. I, that gets my mind running. Like what other crazy projects have been planned at Bohemian Grove? <laughs> yeah. So seriously. Um, so that was kind of the end of the list of crazy conspiracies. So uh, Joe, first off, after hearing all of this crazy stuff, these societies allegedly do, which one, if you had to pick one to join, would you join? <laughs> Um, if, if the conspiracies were true or, or, or f I guess false, I mean, they all sound, if the well, conspiracies are like, true, definitely they all... not, definitely not the, not the Bilderberg. Cause I don't want to be a Nazi. So no. that's easy. <laughs> um, I would say if they were true and assuming that they're not doing terrible things. So I'm just talking for fun, uh, skull and bones. Cause if they're in charge of the CIA, then I want to be there. Yeah. The skull and bones sounds sounds really cool um i think you know all, out of all of them they all had pretty like terrible conspiracies about them even the skull yeah bones. so i i, I want to discount the bad things and just talk about like who i think runs the world yeah you know i think besides beyonce or she, you know beyonce's <laughs> probably the head of skull and bones that's probably why <laughs> and she's just giving it away in the girls run the world right music video There's i think her being honest I think I'd want to be part of Bohemian Grove. Like, well, I feel like if you're Skull and Bones, you're going to Bohemian you're, Grove. You're probably at Bohemian Grove, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to the top, baby. Like, I'll be at Bohemian Grove right next to you, but I won't be able to tell you what I'm working on because you're just Bohemian Grove. I'm Skull and Bones. <laughs> you know what? As a, uh, as a, a, f a finance and accounting guy, I think I'd want to be in the Knights Templar. <laughs> they like, like you know, I just want a bank. They, yeah, they, they created basically like the first international bank. Uh, 
you they're know, the first blockchain. <laughs> kind with, of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like like they were like an extreme like the first computer was yeah. like, you know, clicking stuff manually. They're the first blockchain. Yeah, I still You heard it here first, folks. Yeah, I, I still love that idea that they created the first bank where you could deposit money in one place and pull withdraw it in another place without yeah not only were they the first blockchain they figured out how to be the more efficient one by doing proof of stake instead of proof of work (laughs) (laughs) there's people that have no idea what we're talking about Uh, so but the for the like the one percent that do that's funny yeah (laughs) um but yeah i think the knights templar sound pretty cool and their conspiracy theories compared to some of these other ones were you know kind of kind of weak you know like come on templars get your get your stuff together yeah, <laughs> start controlling more things. Pull more strings. Get a couple reptilians on your crew or something. Oh yeah. So I don't know. It's um, it's a fascinating topic, and uh, you can really go down the rabbit hole. I mean, if you go to YouTube, there's all kinds of crazy people on there talking about. Oh uh, you know, yeah, these we totally. You know, because we're always looking for random side things. I think picking one of these groups over like the course of the next couple of years and just doing like a long, like specific one, like even of like, let's do one on the CIA. Let's do one on Bohemian Grove. Why don't you become a Freemason? We'll document it. <laughs> I, well, our buddy was just bought, uh, or is it in the middle of purchasing an old Masonic temple? So yeah. we should do some videos exploring that place before they For renovate it. it. That is true. Yeah. He, uh, he's in the process right now of buying it. We won't say where, but, um, yep. Yeah. Ooh, 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 uh, why don't we just form our own secret society? <laughs> I mean, let's not form our own secret society. Yeah, geez, you just told everyone. <laughs> yeah, I, we're not going to do that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I hope I uh, hope everyone enjoyed this kind of this is one of our fun episodes where we like. I had fun. You, you hate you, you hate fun. Yeah, it's no, I said I had fun. Oh, you had fun. fun. I thought you said you hate fun. I'm like, wow, that's terrible. Who hates fun? <laughs> like, ow, geez. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, uh, let us know what you think of this episode. Um, if, you know, if you got offended by anything we said, we, we try, Joe and I usually try to keep, no, no, uh, no. if you get offended by anything we said, call the number and let us know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, we, uh, Joe and I make a very hard effort to keep, uh, politics and things like that out of the podcast. Cause you get enough of that everywhere else. We want to just have yeah, fun. We want to be a podcast. bastion of a place to have fun and not have to deal with the same crap. Everyone's talking about everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully we, we stayed to that m- mantra as close as we could with this one. Uh, Joe, Joe tried to try to get me to step into some landmines, but I, <laughs> I, I did. I was, baiting I, aver- you a little I averted, bit. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have let you go down any path. No, I, I, I we were, we do this to just have fun. And, uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll, we'll be back, uh, again soon with another one of our, our normal episodes. And, uh, I don't know, Joe, anything, anything. Yeah. Just, just thanks again for tuning in, please. Uh, if, Uh, Go check out the Patreon. There's a lot more content there. Uh, But you don't have to be a Patreon supporter to support the show. Just follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube. Share all the socials. That's like one of the biggest ways to grow our base. We're over 18,000 followers now on Facebook. Uh, We're hitting record numbers per month and downloads. Those are the type of thing that help out the show Mm -hmm. uh, just as much as the donation. too. Oh, in YouTube, we're less than 100 away from a thousand YouTube subscribers. And there you go. We can start monetizing our videos on YouTube that will help the show out. So if you have not subscribed yet on YouTube, head over to YouTube and subscribe. Yep, that's that's free. And we don't post videos all the time. So you won't be bombarded with notifications of us or you can even silence them. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of that, just remember when enjoying the beauty of nature, whether backpacking, camping, or just taking a walk, always remember to leave no trace. Thanks, and we will see you all next time.